<laughs> Hi, everybody. As you can see, we're having some fun on the side uh, pre-webinar, but welcome to another Schoolscape online webinar. Purpose of these webinars is to help your school during what unprecedented kind of period in our lives. So really excited today. Joining me, I've got uh, Michelle from Digital Generation, and I've also got Chris from Dell. Welcome to the Hi. show. Um, to all of our schools, it is fantastic uh, to have you online with us. Uh, you will see there is a, a poll um, that has been posted uh, on the right of your screen. Feel free just to answer that one if you get a gap. Other than that, if you have any questions, uh, you can pop them through on the questions tab also on your right. But we are going to jump straight in. I think we've got a very important topic. Um, so, Michelle, I'm going to start with you. We are sitting in a situation where, obviously, everyone's been off the school grounds and has been forced into devices. And now we're going back to school. Um, do you, a lot of schools didn't have devices kind of on the school grounds before with each individual learner having a device. Do you think there's yeah. going to be a change in trend? Do you think more schools are going to have each learner with their own device? Uh, I think this question is twofold because you've got to consider your pre's versus the high schools, the juniors versus seniors, you know, your pre's and your preps, they require more interaction, more guidance when it comes to education. So there are limitations. Learners may battle to focus, stay, edu stay engaged. So educational software and a device that speaks properly to support that are key. Um, I look at this as both a reseller and a parent. You know, the device is a tool, but that social interaction and social development is, is important. You can't just completely go over to a digital device. With high school, I think it's an easier transition. Uh, high schools and senior primaries will implement the bring your own device now more than ever. You know, the teacher will go from the knowledge holder to the facilitator. And in essence, schools will now be harnessing technological tools to create content for remote learning. But that being said, um, you know, my opinion is technology has supplemented teaching and teachers, but not replaced them. So devices will become the standard A4 notebook. You're just going from that paper notebook to the digital one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a great answer. I know that the teachers have been kind of in a very incredibly tricky situation. A lot of them being forced into kind of the digital world and having to teach now. But I think it's yeah. created new opportunities, as you have mentioned. All right. So if we jump now, schools are going back. Uh, Michelle, another question for you. What are the challenges now if you suddenly have every learner with a device? Uh, yeah, so I picked on three. So device specifications, your device management and security, and network overload. So this can actually be a disaster. Some parents will work, some students will work on devices that are sometimes purchased incorrectly. They don't perform as well. And some students are on state of the art devices. This is the biggest challenge. And we see this a lot with parents that are in fact already somehow linked to DG. The school often send out a document with the minimum specs and leave it up to the parent to purchase. So the parents who can't afford the high-end specs, you know, they go for something entry level that's easy on the pocket and will just do the job. Um, bringing devices from home into the classroom also poses security risks. Not only should devices be secured individually, the school's network needs to be intelligent enough to know what is, you know, who's doing what. Some apps already solve this. You know, we have classroom manager, we have education data management, which controls each student's device and interaction. But the biggest question is, uh, who owns that device? If the school owns the device, then you can run a simple cloud-based antivirus and deploy it across all the devices. But if the parent owns the device, then you've got to have individual antivirus security. And that's got to have good anti-malware to protect the device from outside online activity. You know, that child's taking that device home. Um, lastly, I think, simply put, if your school's wireless connect, uh, network can't support all the mobile devices as learning tools, then your whole bring your own device strategy is going to fail. Yeah, I know we're going to actually look at some of the devices, but I, I think you've sun, kind of summed it up really well. You know, suddenly if you shove in a whole pile of devices, uh, security, all of these become really, yeah. really big big concerns for a school. And I think uh, also I know a lot of schools are now sitting in that transition phase where with the schools opening, you know, they are expecting their learners to come back with devices. And I think that on the internet, the firewall issues is massive. And as a school, if you don't control that device, you can't exactly. really predict. 
Um, yeah. uh, if I could uh, come in here for a sec. Um, yeah, yeah, please. So I was just thinking a, a good analogy in terms of the type of device that you're using when you're teaching students is, can you imagine standing in front of a classroom and half of the class is in an airtight uh, soundproof bubble and the other class is able to listen to you? Now, if you're giving students the opportunity to bring their own device, often they're going to struggle with connectivity. They're going to struggle to get onto the programs and applications that you're using. You might actually be losing half the class. And it's, it's, it's yeah. just, you know, in, in terms of a, using it as an analogy to say, well, imagine sitting and standing in front of a classroom and half of them are in an airproof bubble. That would be like when you're bringing a device that's not capable of running the software or the application or teaching the student. Um, yeah. So a very big consideration is your foundation, your building block of this needs to be make sure that you've got the right product yep. with, the, with a good support contract. Yeah, and I think, Chris, uh, the added to that is also if you are sitting in a situation where as a teacher, you're now trying to teach, but you're having to look at someone's device who's not working, trying to work out where the app's gone or where they may be logging in. Yeah. I think it does, it does raise a, a massive concern if you don't have a good enough quality product. Um, Michelle, maybe then a good follow-up question would be, you know, you've got all these devices. I think one is I think a lot of the IT managers, and I know we've got a lot of them – from the schools that are logged in today, uh, it, it, it's a massive headache. So yeah. what is the, what's the case for outsourcing? What is the case for saying, let's bring in an external party to help us manage this? So, yeah, I see there's, there's two ways. Schools are either going with their current IT supplier and they're procuring devices through them. They're working with them and, you know, speaking and then sending off a, a minimum spec or they letting the parents purchase with you know minimum specs and saying okay here you make the choice or we've made the choice for you um and talking specifically about like that whole how, how would kind of outsourcing of the management how would that kind of look um for a company to do it like for someone like yourself to come in and do that what does that actually look like um, yeah, so we found that we were getting a lot of queries where parents would send us the school's one pages and they'd ask for help. And we realized that if you don't know technology in terms, then the one pages can almost be a guide that's in gibberish. So as a multi-tiered partner to all brands and a titanium partner with Dell, mm -hmm. we decided that we could offer a school a solution where we sit with them, we spec a device or a range of devices that's suited to the school's requirements, and then offer them an e-commerce platform branded to the school's CI. And this platform's le platform lets parents buy devices that are ranged in price, meets all the specifications so they can't go wrong. Their child's not going to go back into school and have a problem with the device. And it comes with educational discounts. We work with Dell um, quite closely, and we make sure that they, they priced right. Your retail pricing, you know, your parents not going to get any discount. We we work closely with um, a partner. We are Fundi's technology partner at the moment, and I mean, we built their site. We assisted inspect all their technology products on there, even their backpacks and their headphones and masks. And we deliver nationwide. We manage all the warranties and repairs, and they get a rebate on each device sold. Okay, you know, it, it brings up a good point. We were discussing this a little bit before, Michelle, when we were talking about how. Schools need to decide, you know, the primary function of, of a teacher in a school is to teach, not to provide support on devices. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, and changing that and getting caught up in that whole trap of how far down the road do you want to go in terms of exactly. being an IT co co company or providing solutions around IT or actually teaching. And that, that division is, um, in, is a lot of schools are going to be struggling with that going forward. Um, you know, I'd, I'd say pre-COVID, we had laboratories, so we had PC labs where you'd have a number of devices and they were used by a number of classes over a certain period of time. Now, it's it's been forced to the you know, state where I think we're talking about a device per student. We're very close to getting to a device per student. Yeah. That plethora, that multiplication factor of the, the, you know, the complication of all those devices, as many students as you have in your school is as many devices, and you're probably going to find that there's more than one. You know, the average uh, executive out outside these days has two and a half devices. I don't know what the half is, it's probably a very small cell phone. But, um, you know, they've done you know, they've done those divisions. But uh, I think with students also, you're going to find they'll have their mobile phone and they'll have their device, tablet, laptop, whatever yeah. it might be. And, they, and they're expecting to be able to interact between the two. So there's, there's a whole lot, you know, complication just there between a mobile device and a, you know, PC or laptop environment. Um, 
I, I just think it's getting too complex for uh, a school to try and handle as well as teaching, you know, all the mm -hmm. other things that come with teaching students. So at, uh, maybe, Michelle, also, if you can help us. So if, if we break down, if a school wants to remove the burden, um, mm -hmm. firstly, you've, you've spoken about the sales component. Um, yeah. Maybe if you could, if we could start there and just look at the different compartments of how they can remove the burden. So one is you're helping them actually finding the right devices and at a good price. So how yeah. do you actually set that up for the school and how would the school uh, use that? So we start off, we'll obviously sit down with the school and we either take a whole whack of, you know, devices and say to them, okay, you know, touch and feel, let's find out what you need per per grade, if, if that's how they want to work. You know, you, you go, a lot of schools are starting off with iPads and then, you know, by the time they get to high school, they, you, some schools are wanting children on MacBooks or iFi's. So we can spec the whole range, but I think it's a case of finding out what the school wants and what their minimum uh, requirement is. And then we sit down. Most times we actually bring in Dell. Um, Dell sits with us and they can give their technical expertise on why they feel a certain device is best. You know, some schools are still debating Chrome versus Windows. Um, we have that conversation, you know, is it is it best for your school? Is it not, you know, what is the implication on your, your parents' pockets? So it's kind of like, it's almost a partnership. We, we meet at the school, we bring in the OEM. So, you know, we're not just this middleman who's going back and forth. We bring the OEM in and say, you know, this is Chris from Dell and let's help you find the perfect device and the perfect management of it. Okay, cool. So number one, if you're going to outsource, you need the right company to come in and help you. So I know we'll talk about digital generation in more detail, and that's what you do. Um, tell me, you then set up a shop uh, where parents, so do you handle the full, would you recommend if a school is going to outsource this, that you then get a shop, a shop set up by example, you guys to do that whole process so the school doesn't have to do the selling or recommending of devices? And that's exactly it. Yeah, we we take over everything without actually taking over anything. So we, we want to take the stress off the school. Uh, we we build the portal so that parents know that the devices are, you know, recommended yes. from the, the school. We either can plug that portal into the school's website. So it's just an extension. And, you know, if they wanted to link, you know, branded backpacks onto there, of course we can. But it's just a, it's an easier way for a parent to click and get that device. You know, they're going, they're choosing the device that they want. It's getting delivered to their, their home or office, um, wherever the parent wants it to be delivered. And that's included in the price. All the warranties are managed through our call center. So the school doesn't get that phone yeah. call of my device isn't working, what now? We're handling that for the school. That's amazing. Does the school make any money? Ah, uh, big next question. Um, so some resellers uh, probably aren't giving rebates back. And the schools that are giving the one pages and saying, you know, this is your minimum spec, good luck finding it. And the, the parents are walking around Mall of Africa or going on to take a lot and searching the web. Those retailers, they're not giving anything back to the school. No. So with our solution, Yes, we offer a rebate back to the school without increasing the price to the parent. So, wow. you know, every device sold, a little kickback goes back to the school, whether they want to use that in the technology labs or, it, yeah, it's just a way for us to say, you, you know, you're supporting us, we're going to support you as well as support your parents. So what I'm hearing is if you're going to outsource device management to a school, you need to bring in an expert that can actually bring in the Dell or the right people directly. And I know yes. we're going to look at some of the Dell devices now to then the school should or can possibly be getting a, a kickback and doesn't need to do with the sales. Um, yeah. And then thirdly, how, talk to me about support because I think that's the biggest nightmare. Um, kid drops a device uh, it breaks, it's out of action. How does support work? Because I think that's to me is one of the key things that will help a uh, school. Yeah, so just before you touch on that, so d digital generation, we actually do have a config center where you know, we can image devices. So your school could actually sell devices or you know, procure devices and you want the school logo on there. 
we can do that before the device even hits the parent. We can preload apps if the school wants specific apps on there or software. Yeah. Um, so that's another added benefit that we do um, free of charge. But when it comes to you know your your support and your warranties and all that, I know that Chris was probably going to touch on this more than I will um, and go deeper yeah. into it. But there's so many so many options with warranty, and the reason that we're on this call with Dell is because they have one of the best. And that's called accidental damage. So I know Chris is probably going to rattle on about this because he's so passionate <laughs> no, about no, it. Right? I, I, I won't rattle on about it, but I, I will use that. I have three sons. Um, they have all had been given uh, PCs for school during their uh, careers at school. And that they lasted. The, the most important thing also, if you think about it, they typically got them at high school. Now, that was that was the old world, right? Yeah. The new world, they're going to be getting them in junior school as well. But if you can get a device that lasts you five years instead of three years, and those are the, that's the way you know we should be thinking with the parents and the schools. Rather get something that is a little bit better than you know the off the shelf, maybe in, in one of the uh, retailers and as you said macro or whatever, that will last you those extra two years effectively. Then you're paying fifty percent um, of the of the price. Yeah. But um, but because because and boys very hard on on their devices. If all three of them had accidental cover damage cover. And all three of them ended up claiming. The one climbed out of the, um, my wife's car and he took his satchel and put it against the car wheel and she reversed over it. The other one was listening to uh, music. Um, I think he was listening to Spotify whilst he was in the bath and the thing fell into the bath. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and the great thing about this accidental damage is that it will replace your device for a like device. So exactly the same as what you purchased. And if, if there's a newer device and we no longer can get that device, we'll give you the newer device. And there is no excess. It's not like an insurance policy when you have an accident, you know, the insurance broker calls you up and says, could you please pay 20% of your insurance fee and then I'll give you the repair. This is, you pay for it upfront, upfront full disclosed fee. You've got the accidental damage for the life of that um, machine. And you're allowed either unlimited claims depending on what you're going for, or I think it's two or three a year. Uh, typically yeah. one a year, is enough. they should have learned their lesson by then. Um, but very um, relevant in a, a high school and, and especially yeah. junior school environment. And also to add to that, so when your parent goes to your your retailers and your take lots and all that, most of the time there is no special warranty on those devices. It's a one year carry in, and that's it. The retailers jo done their job; they've sold the device and they walk away. Whereas when you come and you partner with an OEM like Dell and or, you know speak with us as Digital Generation we can make sure that your warranties are, are covered. You know, you've, you've got that three year on site or that accidental damage. So it's good to partner with someone who can guide and ensure that, you know, your parents are spending money, but they've got that almost insurance that the device is actually going to last. Yeah. I think one thing that's come in kind of standing out to me is you, you want to choose a legit company. Cause I'm just thinking I buy something at the corner shop. It breaks. <laughs> You know, for me now to work out warranties, et cetera, it's going to be painful. But if I'm dealing yeah. with, for example, digital generation, I can phone you, Michelle, and say, hey, this is this is my issue. And you then have a strong enough relationship directly with Dell that you can kind of address it. Um, exactly. Just we, we, we had a great question, and I'll slowly bring in some questions from Kevin um, Steenkamp. Um, he, he asks, are there monthly payment plans for parents and staff or do they need to purchase the device once off? Is there options on how to pay off devices? So at the moment with the digital generation ourselves, there isn't. Yes. Um, but, you know, we can work with, when I say the, the portals we build, you know, we can, we are signed up with MobiCredit. Um, we can link that in. We, we are partnered with Fundi who, who do finance on, on tech. You know, we could also bring them in. If, and I said this earlier, it's a partnership. So, you know, we're coming to the school to offer you services and even further partnerships where you're getting the best out of out of our relationship. And, re and our partner. There, yeah. Sorry, the third option there, Michelle, is that um, the, the challenge with funding uh, individual devices to individuals is that we both work in corporations and the, and the finance schemes that we have are designed for corporations or larger organizations. We have in the past um, gone to the school and the school has put it on as part of the school fee, but then the school mm. takes on the overall liability for the however many devices they're purchasing and then they just charge the parents going forward. So there's that, there's that mechanism to do it as well. 
It's another very clever option. Thank you. Um, Chris, I want to swing a question your, your way. Um, actually, before that, maybe an important question to ask before, Chris, I'll ask just about upcoming devices. Michelle, uh, from digital generation side, you obviously have a partnership with Dell. Um, yes. And schools are kind of exploring devices and what they should use. Uh, why, as kind of an education expert, has digital generation chosen Dell as one of their kind of, as your core product? Um, yeah, so obviously Chris is a really nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> that too, that too. Um, besides us being a titanium partner, I think we're one of two, Chris, if I'm right, or the one in SA. Um, my biggest, you know, Dell Pro is obviously the warranty, the after sales support, the accidental damage that we mentioned that is phenomenal. Um, but Dell now has got a full range of devices for students and for teachers. Um, Chris will go more into this, but from a reseller's point of view, Dell has the full range. They have devices, they have charging trolleys, they've got desk solutions. I mean, desks that can rise and, and move and got wheels. And, you know, a school can have the entire infrastructure with one OEM. So from the IT department, from their servers and their switches, right down to that student device, and an education management tool. I, mean, I, I don't understand why anyone wouldn't go with Dell. Yeah. Also, one one thing I'm picking up, Michelle, is that uh, you know, if if a school is going to outsource its device management, a lot of that actually lies on having the right devices, um, yes. which have been key. If a, a school is going this route, if they pain or the parents pain or however that works, you want to make sure you don't end up with a whole pile of, of problems. Um, so I think, Chris, if we can swing a question to you, yeah. and I'm quite excited for this, but what's, what are what are we talking device-wise? Can you give us a sneak peek what is available? And, and more specifically, sure. I think, you know, I think a lot of schools are sitting there out there going, well, what actually do my learners need? What is the best option? Um, and interesting, of our poll, um, a large portion have no devices yet on campus. So what would you recommend? Okay, should we talk about form factors first? So I'll just quickly bring up, this is uh, one of our smaller models, uh, Latte 7285. I've got to read it on the front there, my eyes. Um, opens up uh, and it's a detachable. So you can take the oh, screen wow. off, you have the keyboard a separate um, and they, it's got a magnetic thing which clips back on. Now. The, the interesting thing that we've discovered, and it's literally probably over the last few months, so this is not that um, it's not that old news in studies with students, is that on these detachables, this was a very popular form factor up until about uh, 12 months ago. We then did some studies with our, our customers, and we realized that only 3% of them ever actually detach the screen from the keyboard. Sure. So even though it's a really nice thing to have, and it's wonderful, both, both devices have got batteries in them, so you actually double up on the battery capacity when you have uh, two, uh, two together, um, they, they very seldom take them apart, right? So we move to a form factor now, and this is the Chromebook. You can see it says Chrome. Can you see it? Chrome yeah, there. we can see it. Chromebook. Anyway, but, but you'll notice that the, there's very little difference between a Windows device and a Chrome device now. Now, Chromebooks used to be, about two years ago, actually very lightweight devices. They didn't have the robustness built into them. We decided to actually introduce a Chrome operating system. We long negotiations with Google, because Google's quite prescriptive about the way that you use um, their operating system. They are saying, if you want to put Google Chrome, but Chrome operating system, not the, the Android operating system you'd have on your phone, if you want to put it on a device, you have to have all these specifications. And we said to them, yeah, but they're actually quite light. So why don't we just put them into our Latitude family? You know, we sell. 12, 15 million of these a year. So we really know how to build these products well. And, you know, back to the form factor. So now we're moving to a, an era where it's a convertible. So you take the folded over, you still have the keyboard attached, but as soon as you fold it over, it changes into tablet mode. Um, touch screen is activated in both um, modes, but you can use things like a stylus. Um, and as I said, I was mentioning to you a little bit earlier, Peter, is I've, uh, sworn off paper and pen from the beginning of this year, because I'm now trying to interact totally with digital environment where you can write on a screen. So you still have that tactile experience with the device. Um, very important thing is that to make sure that the battery lasts a school day, right? So yeah. previously, 
was in a, students running around. So we have the charging trolleys, as Michelle mentioned. So that's a, a really nice addition to this environment. As the child leaves the class, they slide it into a charging, charging trolley and all the devices are there. They have their names and everything like that. They know where to get them from, but are ready for a next day of, you know, a full day of work. Um, but as I said, you know, at least eight hours of battery life on the device. Interesting thing, just talking about the different environments. On the screen size, you, you can go anywhere from an 11 inch screen all the way up to a 15 inch screen. The larger the screen, the, the bigger the battery you require. Yes. Obviously, when you've got a big screen and a big battery, it starts becoming heavy. So you want to balance those two things out a little bit. You want to say, well, potentially, you know, a 12 inch screen. And one of the, one of the um, innovations that we've brought uh, to the industry in the, in the past few months also is we've got a infinity edge um, just bezel. So previously you would have this big fat border on the side of the yeah. screen, which would mean that on a 11 or 12 inch device, you're using up a lot of it with you know, nothing on the outside. We've managed to get in what was traditionally a, a 15 inch or sorry, a 12 inch uh, form factor, we can get a 14 inch screen into it. So we're reducing the weight, we're getting a big, bigger screen in there and we're using, um, obviously we're using less battery power. The bigger thing, the, the big thing is to try and make sure that Students, as they walking in and out of classrooms, aren't running out of power. That analogy I used at the beginning about when you when you can speak to half the class. Now, what happens if half the class's devices batteries died on them? And the other half is like, okay, I want you all to log in or use. And sorry, ma'am, but I actually didn't charge it, and it's not working. All those additional you know dynamics that you're going to have to deal with. Whereas in the past, all the devices were in a nice computer lab. They were probably a, a PC, so they were plugged into power all the time, and it was very easy to use. Now you've got this mobile thing where people are walking around with the devices. They're taking them home. They're doing homework on them, which brings in that whole thing about ruggedized, managed. The other great thing about bringing these devices into this into the school is um, you can update them. So, and that's where um, our partner DG Store comes in. So, if you have to do things like I'm not sure if um, many of the listeners are aware, but Microsoft, when they introduced Windows 10, and that will be the last Windows version that they introduced. We started off with Windows and then Windows 3.1 and went all the way up to, they yeah. skipped nine. I'm still not sure why. <laughs> but they got onto Windows 10. And, and the challenge with that is every six months, they are updating the operating system. Sure. And they have, they have very little consideration for the piece of hardware that the operating system is on. So if you want to, you can go out and you can Google. Just today, there was a new article from Forbes magazine around how um, Microsoft's now acknowledging the issues they've got on the latest release of Windows 10 and the complications that it's causing with people's devices and not connecting and everything like that. So it's a very complex world where um, you're getting your device updated without knowing about it and potentially it can cause issues. So if you're not bringing it into the school, crazy. it is driving everybody crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if you're, not, if you're not bringing it into the school and getting it updated and you haven't got you know a console where you're managing the devices properly and making sure that all the BIOS and drivers and, you know, firmware are updated so that all applications been, can be, you know, used at the same time. You're going to end up with that same analogy as to go back to where half the class is in a soundproof bubble and the other one is listening to the mm -hmm. teacher. Everyone should be able to work all the time. And those are the, those are the I, things you need to make sure that you, sorry. I, 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 yeah, I think a well, big point that stands out to me there is just battery life. I've never thought about that. But if you have a kid halfway through a class, battery dies, it is a, a massive, massive problem. Um, I know we're running short on time. There's three more questions I do want to ask. Um, Chris, uh, Chromebook, in a nutshell, like one minute, what makes <laughs> them unique? They're getting a lot of airtime at the moment. Yep. Uh, okay. Why um, <laughs> possibly look at them or not look at them? Okay. Uh, why should you look at them? They are fast, uh, lightweight, easy to deploy. Um, they respond incredibly quickly. The mm -hmm. challenges, you need to go and look at the applications. So the applications, yeah. most of them are uh, US or UK based. They're, they're being written for them. So you're paying in pounds or dollars. And it's an annual subscription. And th so there's the gotcha. So at the back end, you can say, okay, I need a mathematical application or I need an art application or whatever it might be. Fantastic. Here's your first subscription. But every year you need to renew it. And if you're, you know, if you're caught on currency, it's potentially a challenge. Right. Um, so that's why, that's why I would say, say look at them. Windows, I mean, if, if you think about it, there's a very good chance that your students, when they leave your school or university, are going to end up working on a Windows device. So maybe, Absolutely. you know, the consistency of working through in that environment um, it is a lot more pervasive as well. Uh, and the, the, the 
the initial one of the big selling points to adopt Chromebooks was around price. It was it was typically an incredibly affordable, and when I say affordable, it was now the sub two thousand rand device. The challenge with that is that they started getting very unreliable. So there's you know they've spent a little bit more time on designing a product, and the price difference between a Windows device and a Chrome device is not that large anymore. Um, but everyone, every, every environment's different. I mean, I, I, maybe I need to ask Michelle. I mean, in terms of your mix on, in schools that you're currently working with, I think majority, probably 70, 80% still Windows. Absolutely. Um, I think it's actually, it's also preference. Some schools want to go to the cloud and they want to run Chrome and they change in the, the entire school over. So, you know, your parents have to go Chrome, but it's exactly that. It's, it's preference. You're, you're either staying on Windows or you converting to Chrome. But bear in mind, I know m majority of the universities are using Windows devices. Cool. Michelle, thank you. I, I know, yeah, I won't give my personal preference. I'll just keep quiet. Um, <laughs> Uh, Not saying Michelle, Chrome is just as good. Chrome is just as good as Windows. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm Chrome. Uh, everything <laughs> works with Chrome. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy with both. Um, uh, we're getting a, Michelle in one minute because yes. we are now over time. So um, uh, Marinda asks call out clientele service. Um, I think it's to do a device breaks. A learner now sitting without a device. It also ties in with the question that Kevin asked, how does one return a damaged device? Do you collect, return them? How do we ensure the child then always has a device in the events? I think this is a big thing if you're gonna outsource the management. How do you handle the breakages, etc.? Yeah, so it's it's two things. If we sit with the school and we say, okay, we're gonna go with the Dell Chromes or we're gonna go with the Dell Latitudes and the school standardizes on that and says, you know, we're gonna actually push this out to parents, then we as DG will actually have swap outs. So a student's device goes down, it's an instant swap out, the student will get a new device, we'll take that one, we'll deal with Dell and the warranties and get it repaired. Um, we currently are with our call center and we have a re reverse logistics uh, warehouse. So when devices do break, we go collect them and bring them here. So the parent never actually gets in their car and physically comes and drives it or drops it off or takes it to the IT manager at the school, we will handle all of that. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Another quick question. Uh, Andres has two questions. I'm just going to ask one. Uh, what is done in terms of teacher training for device management? Um, sure. So we haven't actually done that with um, the schools and with Fundi that we deal with now, but I would say we'd bring in Dell and take it from there. You know, we'll go through the devices. Um, if there is a management tool that Dell has, and I'm sure they, I'm, I'm sure it's, it is available, we'll sit with Dell and the school and and map out a process and train. I, I think I'll just add to that, it's all about consulting with the specific school as to what they want. Yeah. We absolutely have teaching um, facilitation and, and we can help them with a whole lot of solutions in yeah. the way they interact with the devices. So. Cool. We've got um, 140,000 so schools out there that are teaching on our devices. Mm -hmm. So we've got a lot of experience. Okay. 140,000. Yeah, we've got a lot of experience in this field. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, and then, Peter, I just want to say one more thing. So um, you were talking about schools and, um, you know, outlying the funds to procure. And there was a question about, you know, parents being able to, you know, do monthly payments. Um, not many OEMs have this, but Dell have uh, Dell Financial Services, where if a school does want to procure their devices or their infrastructure, they can do that monthly payment with Dell. Okay. Um, we're out of time. Michelle, I am going to ask you one last question. Just in summary, I think we have um, looked at, I think there's a massive case for outsourcing for schools, the yes. procurement, the management, the protection, all of those kind of things, having a reputable system. Uh, one of the questions I haven't yet asked you, Michelle, is why should they use digital generation? <sighs> so <laughs> we've been in the in the business 20 years. We are national. Um, yeah, and I think we've we've proven we can do it. We we are an RST asset management company with multi-tiered partner statuses. We're at Dell Titanium. We're shh, on Chris, but you know, we're, we're HP Platinum, Lenovo Platinum. We we oh. have the experience. Um, <laughs> sorry, Chris. Um, 
you know, we, we have, even though in education we, we haven't been there for 20 years, we've been there for four or five years, you know, our biggest clients are the likes of Discovery, Standard Bank, Pick and Pay. Like, we have the references to say, choose us, you know, we will partner with you, we will bring the OEMs to the table. And, yeah, I, I don't know what more to say. We, we are the partner no, to choose. Great. I just think from our side, from Schoolscape side, from School Advisor side, we know you are uh, top rated. You are there. We've seen you at our events. We've seen you in person. So we know schools can trust you. That's why we're doing this interview. So thank you. That's a good answer. Chris, then just because she stabbed you in the heart, uh, last <laughs> question for you, 30 seconds. Why Dell? And then we're going to close off for the day. Thanks, Peter. Um, I, I just think that we've got a lot of experience in this environment where we that's what we do. You know, we start with education. That's where we spend a lot of our time. 140,000 schools. You can imagine the amount of feedback we get. Um, and we, we're very happy to share what our learnings with uh, these schools. So I think we've got a lot that we can share apart from the hardware um, that will make you take the most use or make the most use of technology in your schools. Awesome. All right. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Michelle. Um, to all of the schools out there, um, I'm going to pop uh, Michelle's email address in the chat functionality. So if you are looking for devices, outsourcing management, if you need assistance, help, you want a query or quote, please connect with her. She would also be able to give you more info on the Dell devices. Um, I know we couldn't get to everyone's questions. Uh, there were a couple of other questions. So what I will do, ask if Michelle would be happy to jump into the questions tab uh, yeah. or Kristen to see if there's anything else that could be answered there. To all of our schools, thank you. I know we have gone five minutes over, but I thought it important to get those last questions in. We really appreciate your time coming live with us today. Please watch out for more webinars. Um, and from our side, Michelle, thank you. It's always a pleasure doing anything with Digital Generation. We know you. And Chris, if you have one of those extra convertible devices, you can send it my way. I don't mind. And for the schools, if you have time, there is one last poll that we are going to post live now. Um, and what it says, uh, do your, uh, oh, sorry, where is it? What do you think is the most effective device for your learners? If you could have anything, would it be a laptop? Chromebook, tablet, or convertible. So that is in the poll. Please enter that if you have a gap. And thank you, everyone. We appreciate your time. Cheers, Chris. Thank you. Cheers, Michelle. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye.